Got a great opportunity here to take a look at the two of the polymer revolvers, the Ruger LCR and the brand new Smith & Wesson Bodyguard. First off, of course, we can see that they both come in kind of simple cardboard boxes. Uh, that's important mostly because uh, we know that neither one of them really are spending a lot of money on those plastic boxes that honestly most of us don't even use. So I'll open them up. Let me see that they both do come in a soft case. The uh, Ruger comes along with its manual keys to the safety and uh, some NRA information and spent casing and that's it. Smith & Wesson pretty much similar lock that one has a lock too. And then it's manual shell and warranty info. Open up the Ruger. Um, really inexpensive little gun tote there's our revolver. This one has a small pocket on the back with some Velcro. So I'd give this about an 8 out of 10 for being useful. Uh, you can use it for other things if you wanted to. And then our Smith is, comes in a little smaller uh, pouch. But uh, can make it actually a little bit more useful. It's got the Smith & Wesson logo there, real subdued. It's got zippers on both sides where the Ruger just zips the one way. Definitely a little nicer. It's got the uh, sort of fitted elastic and then place here for uh, speed strip or something. So uh, pretty much dead even as far as their boxes, their pack packaging, and now their uh, So now let's take a look at the revolvers themselves. The Smith uh, has a different grip on it. Uh, the Ruger in this case has the uh, laser grip from Crimson Trace, so it's a little wider. Looking at them from the top. Looking at their sight pictures. Not a real big difference between these two. Looking at them from underneath. And again, the Ruger comes with a couple of different grip options. If the Smith doesn't already, I'm sure it will come with some different options. Let's see the lined barrel here. The Smith has this new sort of ambidextrous top push where the Ruger has the button on the side both of them are five shot revolvers, five shot cylinders the Ruger has some sort of scallops where the Smith has a more standard cylinder the cylinder release looks a little thin here or else it's just the design but it does look a little thinner than the Ruger and that's basically an issue when reloading depending on what system you use if this gets bent that's one of the weak links in a revolver again looking at their sights in this case they both just have a standard blade front sight and a notched rear uh, the Ruger at least does come with a big dot excess big dot option um, they both have lasers the bodyguards have the integral laser on the right side of the frame here at the top. Push it once and it's on steady. Push it twice and it's on a pulse. Push it a third time, the gray button here, and it turns off. You run through that cycle each time. With the Ruger, this is a crimson trace grip and the little pressure pad here on the below the grip is what activates the laser and it's always a steady laser. Uh, big difference between the two besides the placement of the triggers is the placement of the laser itself. So to illustrate that if we were to for example 
use this rod in the barrel to indicate the path of the bullet in a straight line. Um, with this crimson trace, the laser is down below here. And that means that at some point, and I'm exaggerating the angles here, but at some point the laser has to come up to f find the path of the bullet. Whereas with the Smith & Wesson design, with the InSight laser, the laser is really close to and very parallel with that um, path of the bullet. So, and I'm ex exaggerating, but it has to do less of this downward drop to meet the path of the bullet. And whether or not that's a big disadvantage or advantage, um, I don't really know, but I can tell that there's a difference there, you know, just doing the, the simple math. Um, trigger guards seem to be about the same. And otherwise, ergonomics of these two is going to be very similar. As far as more physical characteristics, the uh, Smith & Wesson with the laser empty weighs 14.5 ounces on our scale. The Ruger LCR with Crimson Trace Laser Grip weighs 13.1, so just an ounce or so less. Um, to put that in comparison, this is a Smith & Wesson model 342, and it's a titanium air light, basically one of the lightest 38 revolvers and it weighs 11.5 ounces so even these polymers aren't competing with the, some of the lightest ones out there um, as far as size goes I think their physical dimensions are going to be very close to each other the Ruger does have a little bit more I'm going to say a modern shape the Smith seems to have done a good job of sticking with its um, J-frame type style and design. You definitely know when you're looking at this Smith & Wesson uh, bodyguard that you're looking at a Smith & Wesson. It looks very much like their J-frames. Again, this is a, this one is the Smith & Wesson model six or 342, which is a 38 caliber uh, titanium and aluminum lightweight revolver. Uh, this one also has a laser grip, a crimson trace, and its trigger is, this is more of a hard plastic grip, and its trigger is this button here. You can actually hear it when it goes on. It's an older model. So these are all very comparable to the same size as the typical J-frame. Um, I think a big difference when you shoot these, because you can see the uh, where the polymer and the steel or aluminum part of the frames connect, uh, I think that that gives you a bit of uh, an aid in recoil. The Rugers have uh, a little bit softer rubber on their uh, Crimson Trace grips, where the bodyguard, it's rubber, but there's just less of it. I suspect that the Smith is going to be less forgiving as far as recoil goes. To release uh, the cylinder, you basically push forward on either side or in the middle of this top release. They're both double action only, trigger pulls. Very smooth on the Smith & Wesson. A little bit more crisp on the Ruger, but definitely light on the Ruger. Um, dry firing them, I have fired the Ruger before, I haven't shot them as Smith, but just dry firing them, the Smith actually seems to be a little uh, more smooth, or a little smoother. Uh, just a quick side note, the Ruger has two laser warnings where the Smith uh, somehow gets by with just the one laser warning. Uh, you've got your Smith & Wesson logo etched on the side here. Uh, serial numbers are up inside the frame in this area. With Ruger, you've got your logo embossed in the plastic and serial number on the Ruger is along the bottom of the frame here quite large.
So the Smith & Wesson Bodyguard Ruger LCR, which is the better polymer revolver. Uh, I think it has yet to be determined. Uh, this one's about five or six, between five and six hundred. This one's maybe a bit more. Um, Ruger's been around for about a year now, and the bodyguards are brand new. Both of these revolvers use the 38 Special cartridge. Uh, They're both rated for plus P. The Ruger's got the plus P there, and the Smith has the plus P there. I double checked in both manuals, and both of them are fine with the plus P ammo. A couple other interesting things to note from the manuals. In the uh, Ruger manual, it's easier to just show you in the manual. That's where the key goes to uh, for the internal lock. So it's underneath the grips here. And then on the Smith, they show the tool that you would use to remove the barrel sleeve. Just thought that was kind of interesting. So, two brand new polymer revolvers. Ruger's just a little bit older. Smith & Wesson's new to the group. Uh, Smith & Wesson did a couple of changes with their uh, the way that their cylinder release and the way that their laser are mounted on the revolver. Uh, the Ruger went a little bit more traditional and just went with more cosmetic type of changes in the look. Um, shot this one, real high marks. Looking forward to shooting the Smith, but there was a close look for anybody who's making a decision to buy. Uh, hopefully that gave you a, a good close look at the two of them together. Thanks for watching. The guys and gals of GunWebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching GunWebsites.com.